A while back I uploaded a music visualizer made out of watercolor saucers and since some of you asked for it, I want to show you how I created this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm going to split up this tutorial in four parts. The preparations, the recording process, the conversion of the music file into the individual bars of the visualizer and finally, we'll stitch everything together in one image and render it out. Time to start with step number one. The preparations. What do you need for making a video like this? First of all, you obviously need something with the length you can arrange in columns. Like the sources I used, or bottles, or maybe even book stacks or something. Next up, you need a still background. And with still, I mean really still. You should even try to avoid the daylight if possible since clouds or moving trees can already cause a difference in lighting big enough to be noticeable in the video. So if you have something like a studio lamp or a softbox at home, you should definitely use mountains. Now regarding the camera, obviously it needs to be placed on a solid tripod, but you should also make sure that it is set to manual mode to ensure that the exposure time doesn't change. I would even consider using the, the delayed shutter action release since even pressing the trigger button on the camera can cause enough movement to screw things up. Once everything is set up, we can continue with part 2. The recording process. Now comes the actual process of shooting the pictures. Start with the bottom line of sources or whatever you decided to use, then work your way up in horizontal lines and be extra careful to not move the objects you already placed. When you're done, copy the files to your PC and name them in order, starting with the picture that resembles the quietest stage. In the end, you should have a tiny stop motion clip showing all the columns moving up together at the same time. If you're done with that, it's finally time to start up Blender. Conversion of the music file. Now that we're in Blender, the first thing you want to do is open up the note editor in place of the 3D view since we won't need it in this tutorial and click on the checkbox next to use notes to bring up the two default notes. Left click on the render layer 1 and press X to delete it since we won't render anything in this tutorial. Instead we'll use an image node so click on add, input and then select image. Next up, click the open button on the node and navigate to your image sequence. Select all of the pictures at once and click on open image in the top right corner. Now you'll see that the image node is now automatically in image sequence mode and because we are currently at frame 1 of our scene, it also displays the first frame of the sequence. But if I now jump to frame 2, 3 and so on, the node also starts showing the next image files, which is not really what we want, because we are making a classic stop motion clip here. So we need some way of controlling which image gets loaded. And to achieve that, we'll just set the frames value to 1. This way, it only ever shows the first frame of the sequence. So if we go to another frame right now, frame number 1 always stays loaded by default. And to control which frame actually gets loaded, we'll now use the offset value at the bottom to manually choose the frames. In the end, we'll need one image node for every color the visualizer is supposed to have, so that we can animate the columns individually. For me, this means I need six image nodes, so I'm just gonna copy them give them names corresponding to the color of the column they represent and to make things even easier to distinguish I'll also color code them using the color option in the top right corner.
Alright, now we have six nodes with different names currently outputting the same image. But now every node receives the frequency of the music file to influence the offset value. So which frequencies work best? Well, personally I'm not an expert on anything sound related. But with the help of an online guide by Mondstein Records, link is in the description, I split up the frequencies like this. From left to right, the columns represent the sub bass with 16 to 50 hertz, the bass with 50 to 250 hertz, the deep middle part with 250 hertz to 2 kilohertz, the high middle part with 2 to 4 kilohertz, the lower heights with 4 kilohertz to 6 kilohertz, and finally the highest frequencies with 6 to 16 kilohertz. Okay, now that we've decided on the frequencies, we can start attaching them to the individual nodes. So make sure that you are at frame 1 and just go over each image node and add a keyframe for the offset value. Now we need to open a second window, which is a graph editor, and maybe you'll see one of the keyframes we just set in the top left corner of the window, but it's also possible that none of them appears. In both cases, just go down to the little blue cursor icon at the bottom of the window and click it. Now Blender should show all of the keyframes and not just the ones we have selected. Now start with the first keyframe, in my case it's the blue one. Select it and then go to key and click bake sound to F curves. Navigate to the song you want to use and select it. But don't click the confirmation button in the top right corner yet because this is the point where we have to set the frequency. So go down to the bottom left corner where it says lowest frequency and highest frequency and type in the corresponding values. In my case, 16.0 and 50.0. Then click on bake sound to F curves. And maybe you can already see some of the movement in the graph. Now repeat this for all the other columns with all the other frequencies. When you're done, take a look at all the graphs and you'll see that they rarely exceed the 2.0 mark, which is really unfortunate since we actually prepared photos for an offset of up to 5. So we need to make the graphs a bit stronger. Kinda. To do that, go to the loudest and strongest graph, in my case it's the green one, open up the properties panel if it isn't already and add an envelope modifier. Now what does this modifier do? It takes a set part of the graph and stretches it up to the desired height. To start off, we need to select an area of the graph to stretch. In my case, it's from 0 to 2. You can see that you did it correct if the graph is now perfectly framed by two broken lines. Now click on Add Point, which opens a new menu for us to select the desired height for the graph. We want it to range from 0 to 5, so set these values as minimum and maximum. Now we should have a nice and interesting curve, but you might notice that there are a few rare points at which the graph rises to a y value of 6.0. These points can lead to a very glitchy window result since Blender can't load a 7th image if we only shot 6, so it will just leave these places black, which looks pretty terrible. To avoid this behavior, we'll just add a limits modifier, which does just what it says. It limits how high our graph can rise. We want to stop our graph from reaching a maximum y value, so activate the checkbox next to maximum y and type in 5.0, and all of the values higher than 5 will get cut down. Of course, we need to copy these modifiers to all of the other graphs, otherwise only the green column would noticeably rise up. Copying modifiers is pretty straightforward, just click on the copy to clipboard icon next to the big add modifier button. Both modifiers will be saved to your clipboard. Then just go to all of the other graphs and press the paste icon next to it. 
When you're done, you should have a much more spectacular curve with the highest one ranging from 0 to 5. Now is a good time to check on how this looks together with music. This means that you should first of all decide on the render resolution, I recommend the dimensions of the original frames from your camera, since then we don't have to deal with any cropping. Next up we should set the length of the scene. So just calculate it based on the duration of the song and the frame rate. My scene needs to be 6225 frames long. And if we now go back to the note editor, we can try out the effect by selecting the note and pressing play or alt a on the keyboard. Now you can see that the number is changing constantly. To make checking our setup even easier, open the video sequence editor in place of the graph editor, make sure that you're on frame 1 and then click on add and sound. Then select your song and from now on it will be running in the background whenever we play our scene. So select your note and press Alt A again and you should notice that the frame value actually rises and sings together with the song. If that's what's happening, we're done with the hardest part of making the visualizer. Now we have six image notes displaying one frequency each, but on all of the columns. The final thing we now have to do is splitting them up so that only the blue column of the note named blue is used, only the green one of the note named green and so on. So open up a UV image editor in place of the video sequence editor and click on open. Now navigate to the last image of your sequence and load it. Then go down to the button that says View and set its mode to Mask. This opens up another button for creating new masks. Click it and change the name of the mask to Blue or whatever you called your first column. Now zoom in on it and frame it with a mask by repeatedly pressing Ctrl and the left mouse button. When you're done with the first mask, click the little plus icon, choose the name for the second mask and make it around the second column. Repeat this for every one of them. Then click on Add in the Note Editor and select Input Mask to add a mask node. But in order to use this node properly for what we are planning, we actually need two nodes. So add a Set Alpha node from the Converter category and plug it in between one of the image nodes and the output. This set alpha allows you to decide which part of the image will be visible in the output. So if I set this to a lower value, the whole image will become slightly transparent and if I set it back to 1, it goes back to normal. And now we can connect the mask node up to it and let it define which part of the image stays, that's the column we are looking for, and which one gets removed. So click on the little light blue mask icon and select the mask corresponding to the image node you're currently trying to edit. In my case it's the blue one. Then connect the mask output to the alpha input and you'll see that everything except the blue column disappears. Now if you really manage to shoot the images pixel perfect with no distortions at all, it might work like this. 
but if there are slight differences between the photos, they will be easily detectable at these edges. That's why I like to make them a bit softer. So click on Add once again and go to Filter Blur and add a blur node between the mask and the set alpha node. Give it a strength of 30 and select fast Gaussian as the blur node since it requires less resources. Once that is done, select the mask, blur and alpha over node and make a copy of them for each of your image nodes. Remember to change the mask used in the individual mask nodes so that it fits to their corresponding image nodes. Now the outputs of the 6 set alpha nodes contain the 6 columns of our scene with correct masks and everything. Now all that's left to do is stitching them together. Add an alpha over node from the category converter and combine the first two columns with it. You might need to set the premal value to 1 instead of 0 to make it work properly. Then just get another alpha over node and add the third column to the first two. Repeat that until you have all six columns in one frame but without the proper background. To add it in, get one final alpha over node and another image node that will act as our background. So just open one of the photos, it shouldn't matter which one. Then place the alpha over node directly before your composite output and plug the background image in the top input and the columns in the bottom one. Unlike with all the other alpha over nodes in this scene, this time it's actually important how the two are plugged in. Hit render and there you have it. Open all the rendered frames in your favorite editing software, add the background music and enjoy the show.